let's start another topic called sex linked inheritance so what do you mean by sex linked inheritance sex linked inheritance is the appearance of a trait which is due to the presence of an allele exclusively either on the x chromosome or on the y chromosome isn't it the genes for certain traits are located on the sex chromosomes that is x or y so it can be called as the inheritance or appearance of these traits because of an allele present exclusively on the x chromosome or y chromosome that is called as sex linked inheritance as you have studied that sex chromosome in humans are different types of types in males and females females have a pair of x chromosome and males have a xy chromosome the sex chromosome of females are thus known as homomorphic while the males are called as heteromorphic depending upon the sex chromosomes involved the inheritance is called x linked inheritance or y linked inheritance so let us understand the concept by studying the inheritance of certain genetic disorders in human beings you might have heard about the disease called hemophilia and color blindness hemophilia which is also called as the bleeders disease and color blindness means they cannot identify the particular colors these disorders are very common in males than in females and that is due to the recessive genes present on the x chromosomes now what is sex linked inheritance sex linked inheritance let us understand the sex linked inheritance in man if a father is dominant for a certain character and a mother is recessive the dominant character will be passed on to the daughter that is f1 and not to the son x chromosome from a male parent always goes to the daughter while goes to the y goes to the son x chromosome from a female parent goes to the daughter as well as to the son the x chromosome contains genes like any other chromosomes while y chromosome contains a very few genes and controls a few special characters this is what we call it as sex linked inheritance sex linked inheritance like hemophilia hemophilia which is a disease in which blood fails to clot properly so even a small injury can be dangerous as blood continues to flow from the wounds for an hours the clotting of blood may take 30 minutes to 24 hours as compared to 2 to 8 minutes in a normal person in a normal person blood clots within 2 to 8 minutes whereas in a hemophilic patient it continues to bleed to half an hour to 24 hours so hemophilia is a recessive character resulting in form of a sex linked gene located on x chromosome it expresses itself in the following condition you see in females both sex chromosomes have recessive gene for hemophilia so they are called as homozygous recessive in males only one chromosome that is x chromosome with the gene of hemophilia is enough to produce the progeny disorder and y does not contain the homologous gene that is xy the female in heterozygous condition with one dominant and one recessive gene is just a carrier of hemophilia so she does not suffer from the disease but passes in on to the next generation that is how the hemophilia occurs so the following cases explains the sex linked inheritance inheritance of color blindness and hemophilia on page number 29 so if you go through those cases you will be able to know about the following now let us come to the mendel's experiment on inheritance now who is mendel and for what he is known as the father of genetics so before that i would like to tell you who is mendel actually so that is there in your page number 22 grigor mendel he is an austrian monk and also called as the father of genetics so mendel attempted attempts were made to formulate an explanation for inheritance but majority of these were without any logical support so the most important contribution was by grigor mendel who brought about a new horizon the field of genetics 
See, Grigor John Mendel was born in a peasant family. And he was an Augustian priest and known as the father of genetics for his pioneering work on the inheritance of trait in pea plants. You know what is a pea plant? What we normally called it as mutter. The Mendel was educated in a monastery and in his spare time he started his study on pea plants at monastery's experimental garden. He cultivated and tested around 29,000 pea plants. His experiments was fourth generalization which were known as Mendel's law of inheritance. So what led to Mendel to undertake these experiments? For what he has thought of doing these experiments? See, Mendel was fascinated by his observation on new varieties of ornamental plants produced by hybridization. He noted a striking regularity in the results obtained in the hybrids. This led him to find out what type of offspring would be obtained if there of the or if these hybrids were crossed further to yield next generation. Now, Mendel took a variety of pea plants, isn't it? Mendel took a variety of pea plants for his experiment and the um, biological name of that pea plant is known as Spicer sativa. So there are, uh, Mendel has selected this garden pea for certain reasons. There are three main reasons for which he selected this garden pea. That is, many varieties were available in the alternative form of a character. Varieties were available in pure form that bred through, that is to produce the same type of generation after generation. And peas are normally self-pollinated, but self-pollination could be prevented by removing corresponding reproductive parts of a flower and could as well be cross-pollinated artificially. So, Mendel took varieties of pea plant showing seven pairs of contrasting features as shown in figure 3.6 on page number 30. Mendel crossed pure breeding varieties first by taking only one feature at a time that is called as mono-hybrid cross and by taking two features together that is called as dihybrid cross. He tried with all the seven features and his observations were similar for all. When you see figure 3.6, the first character is on the color of the flower. See the dominant character is purple in color whereas the recessive trait is white in color. When you see the color of the seed, dominant is yellow and the recessive is green in color. Like that seven characters he has shown the varieties or traits in a seven pair of garden P. Now first case, one of the monohybrid cross is shown between below that is the figure 3.6. A pure breeding plant bearing terminal flowers was cross pollinated with a pure bleeding plant with axillary flowers. So the resulting seeds after sowing produced all the plants with axial flowers only when these hybrid plants that is F1 generation were self pollinated they produce the F2 generation plants with axillary flowers and the plants with terminal flowers in the ratio of 3 is to 1. These were the visible forms which we call the phenotypes and out of these the one with terminal flowers that is small a small a in subsequent self pollinated generation produced all plants with the terminal flowers only and out of the other remaining three were the axillary flowers. See, first one is AA, produced all plants with axillary flowers only. And second one is capital A and small a, again produced in the same ratio, that is 3 is to 1, was in the second generation, that is the F2 generation. So this kind of ratio obtained by crossing for two different traits of a single character is known as monohybrid ratio and this consisted of the following phenotypic ratio that is 3 is to 1, 3 means 3 axillary and 1 is terminal. Whereas in genotypic, that is the gene feature, the ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 where AA that is capital A capital A is completely dominant or homozygous dominant, then capital A small a is uh, heterozygous dominant and the other one is small a small a which is homozygous recessive. That was the case 1. Now when we consider about case 2, the pure tall P plant that is capital T capital T were crossed with dwarf T plant, T T plants that is small t small t and the progenies of F1 and F2 generations were obtained as follows. 
you can see that in that boxes on page number 31 so second uh, after the second case let us come to the third case similarly on crossing the plants grown from pure ground round that is capital R capital R seeds with the plants grown from pure wrinkle that is smaller smaller seeds the results will be this one so genotypic ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 whereas the phenotypic ratio will be 3 is to 1 so this is also given in the box page number 31 you just go through those boxes that is a punnet boxes so in all the above three cases the monohybrid ratios are same like phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 and genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 now some of the generalized principles based on above breeding experiments are uh, as follows you see each pair of contrasting characters depends on a pair of genes each individual carries such gene in duplicate an individual produces gametes which have only one member of a pair of the genes fertilization of the gametes restores the duplicate condition of the genes and the sex cells with respect to the genes they contain get fertilized at random so the dihybrid ratio gives us the breeding result with two pairs of contrasting character mendel tried several combinations and one such combination was the crossing of a variety with round and yellow seeds with another variety having wrinkled and green seeds so the ratio which we get in this dihybrid ratio is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so always the monohybrid ratio in f2 generation is phenotypic is 3 is to 1 genotypic is 1 is to 2 is to 1 whereas dihybrid ratio in f2 generation will be phenotypic is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and genotypic will be very complex in nature now <clears throat> Mendel's law of inheritance there are three laws given by Mendel so the first law the Mendel's generalization of the results of breeding experiments are given under three laws these three laws are law of dominance law of segregation law of independent assortment now what happens in dominance out of a pair of contrasting character present together only one is able to express itself while the other remains suppressed and the one that expresses is the dominant characteristics and the one unexpressed is the recessive character the recessive character can express only when the pair of consists of both recessives that is homozygous recessive so what happens here law of dominance also says that states there is a if there is a pair of contrasting character only one character expresses itself in f1 hybrid while the other remains hidden the trait which expresses in f1 generation is dominant the unexpressed is called as the recessive the second one is law of segregation this is also called of called as the law of purity of gametes so here what happens the two member of a pair of factors separate during the formation of gametes they do not blend with but segregate or separate into different gametes the gamete combine together randomly and fuse at the same time of zygote formation that is what law of segregation now when we come to the third law that is law of independent assortment when there are two pairs of characters the distribution of the independent of the distribution the distribution of the alleles of one character into the gamete is independent of the distribution of the alleles of the other character that is what we call it as law of independent assortment i repeat it the distribution of the allele of one character into the gamete is independent of the distribution of the allele of the other character that is what the law of independent assortment all these three laws are very important and you have to mug it up and understand how Mendel has generalized these laws now where to apply these laws Mendel's law see a knowledge of the basic Mendelian principle gives us an idea about the new combination in the progeny of hybrids and enables us to predict the, this frequency such information is of great importance to the plants and animal breeders producing better breeds even new types of plants will also be created 
with new combination of useful character and so that is produced by hybridization that is how the mendel's law are applied in different fields now next topic is about mutation so mutation is a sudden change in one or more genes or in the number or in the structure of chromosomes mutation alters the hereditary material of an organism cells and results in a change in a certain characteristics or traits for example sickle cell anemia is a blood disease caused by a gene mutation and the mutation causes change in the dna resulting in the production of sickle shape rbcs that means the blood cells will be in a shape of sickle and you know what is a sickle next is radioactive radiation this also alters the gene structure and their effects can be seen generation after generation so uh, once before when we had the world war 2 in 1945 in the in japan that is hiroshima nagasaki an atomic explosion has occurred and which has led to a number of deformities in the body of plants and animals which are still persisting till date so this is what about the mutation now when i speak about the punnett square how to cross the punnett square you can see examples on page number 27 and then you can carry out those examples on page number 29 to case 1 case 2 and third case is simply a blank one you can try yourself by multiplying them and if you have any other doubts you can put them in the comment sections so please do the multiple choice questions short type answers short answers long answers structured answers etc